Welcome to SPC Insights with Dr. Bill, simplifying SPC and statistical analysis. Today, we're going to take a look at control limits. In particular, we're going to answer some questions. We're going to answer questions, how many points do I need before I calculate control limits? When do I lock them? How many have to be in control before I have good limits? Do out-of-control points impact the calculations? When should I recalculate? And should I delete out-of-control points before calculating the control limits? So how many points before I calculate control limits? Well, the accepted practice in the past, when I first learned, was you calculated control limits after 20 data points. And that was whether you had an X bar and R chart or an individual's chart. It was after 20 points on the chart, you recalculated control limits. And then you recalculate them after you had 100 individual samples. So if it was an X bar and R, the subgroup size of four would be 25 subgroups. Individual's chart, it would be 100 individual samples. So it's a lot of samples to recalculate. But... That was so you get a better view of the average and the variation. But now with, con with the software we have nowadays, we don't need to be held to this practice. We can change it. And we do change it. Because what you're going to do now, when can you calculate control limits, you're going to be able to start with control limits as, with as few as five points. So you collect your data. Here's an X bar and R chart with five points. We've calculated the control limits and the average. The average was 99.8, upper control limit 103.62, 95.98 for the lower. And what we do is we have these five points. And then what we do is we calculate control limits after each point until you reach 20. So here we have 20 points. And if your process is fairly stable, you really don't need to calculate control limits again. You can do it for better estimates of the average in sigma, as we talked about, by recalculating control limits after 100 points. So when do I lock the control limits? Locking means not to update the average and control limits after new data is added. So you lock the limits after you have those 20 data points, and you expand the lock control limits into the future. And that's what you judge the process against in the future are those expanded control limits. So how many points have to be in control before the control limits are any good? Well, once you start calculating control limits, your control limits are automatically good. Remember one purpose of control charts to identify out of control points? The question really deals with the impact of leaving out of control points in the calculations. Doesn't that make the control charts water? Yes, but the control limits are still valid for the data you have plotted on the chart. Being in control is not the natural state. It takes some work to bring it into statistical control by eliminating those special causes. Should I delete out of control points? Rule of thumb I follow is when reason for out of control points is known, delete it from the calculations. They do have an impact on the control limits, but the size of that impact depends on how far out of control that point is and the amount of data you have. The more data you have, the less impact out of control points will have on the calculations. Now we're going to take a look at when you should recalculate control limits. Ideally, only when you have a process change. That is a fundamental change to the process. Perhaps you have moved your average up or down, or you've reduced the variation. But the thing is, you're going to know if a process change you made has worked by looking at the control chart. So here's an example of locking control limits and changing control limits. So you suppose you're tracking OSHA recorded injuries per month using a seat chart, you're going to lock your control limits based on the first 12 months. Now suppose you introduced a new safety program in month 13, and it had an impact as you can see. You've got a run of points below the average, proof that the new program worked. So then it's time to recalculate the control limits. Here are the first 12 months of data based on uh, representing your baseline, and here's your next data. We've recalculated starting with subgroup 13, the new month of the program, and you can see those become now your new locked limits. Now, what happens if your chart goes out of control? You go to look for the special cause of variation. You don't find it. You know, you have a point beyond the control limits. You go look for the reason and you can't find it. Take another data point, it comes back into control. So what do you do? Well, you don't worry about it. That special cause will come back eventually. It was caused by a fleeting special cause. It was there, then it's gone, and you didn't catch it. But the, here's another one of an example that, of, of a special cause that stays around on your control chart. Here the real problem is when you can't find the reason a special cause stays with you. For example, a run of average of, of, of points above the average. You can't find the special cause that's staying there. Perhaps you had a subtle change in raw material or something that moved the average up a bit and you can't find it no matter how hard you look. Well, there are two things you can basically do in this situation. 
If the incre increase in average is not what you want, you can adjust your process to bring that average back down. If the increase in average is what you want, that's good, then you recalculate the goal limits where they should start. In both cases, that special cause is still part of your process. Let's take a look at how control limits work in the SPC for Excel software. Here we're going to look at that C chart again with 12 points. We're going to add 12 more data points to it and update the charts with the split control limits. So the first thing you do is you enter your data into an Excel spreadsheet. Here we'll have our month values in A and our B values be the in B column be the uh, number of OSHA recordables per month. You come in and select the C chart you're going to use. Select OK. Then all you have to do is enter a name for the for the chart. We'll just call it test. Keep the automatic limits right now updating and say OK. And you get your C control chart where you have your C values or the number of OSHA recordables on the Y axis. It has the upper control limit calculated, the average calculated for those 12 values. Now let's go enter the, the rest of that data over the for the next year where you had the improvement you just simply enter that data into your Excel spreadsheets select options you're going to update the test chart select that and you have your C chart now with the limits split so you have your baseline data now which is months 1 through 12 with an average of 5.2 and you have your improved process with an average of 1.2 that's how easy it is to split the limits in the SPC for Excel software so what we take a look at in this video, we took a look at where uh, when you calculate control limits, how many points you need, you only need five. When do you lock them? After 20 data points, you lock them. How many points have to be in control before you have good control limits? They're good control limits right off the bat. How do out of control points impact the control limit calculations? Should I delete them before calculating control limits? No, you shouldn't necessarily, it depends on the impact. When should I recalculate control limits? That's when the process has significantly changed, as we saw in the example of the C chart. And we took a look at different types of special causes, one that stays around and one that is fleeting. So and then we took a look finally at the control limits in the SPC for Excel software. This is our video on when to calculate, lock, or recalculate control limits. I want to thank you for taking the time to do it. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel below. Visit our, our website for our SPC knowledge base 220 articles. Download your demo and calculate your own control limits. Once again, thank you very much for watching.